everyone, Kenji Lopez Alt from Serious Eats and the Food Lab here, and today I want to talk to you about one of my favorite ways to prepare turkey. Now, don't get me wrong, I love a simple roast turkey for Thanksgiving, but sometimes I want something a little bit more elegant and with a little bit more flavor, and that's when I pull out this recipe. It's porchetta-style turkey. Now, traditionally in Italy, porchetta is made with a pork loin wrapped in its own belly, flavored with sage, fennel, black pepper, red pepper flakes, and garlic. But the great thing is that all of those flavors work really well with turkey breast, so that's what we're going to be doing today. You can roast it, but today we're going to be cooking it sous vide so that we get it nice and juicy and evenly cooked all the way throughout. It's one of the best holiday centerpieces around, but of course you can do this any time of year. And the great thing about it is that the leftovers are actually really, really good sliced and used in sandwiches. Now here's how we do it. I'm gonna start by combining a quarter cup of sage leaves, that's about half an ounce, four cloves of garlic, a half tablespoon of fennel seed, a half tablespoon of black peppercorns, a half teaspoon of red pepper flakes, and a couple teaspoons of kosher salt in the bowl of uh, this mini prep bowl. You can also use a food processor, of course. Now, I'm gonna cover this all up, and we're gonna blend it. What we're looking for is a pretty fine paste, so you do want to scrape down the sides every once in a while. And there we go. Now we're going to focus on the turkey. So the turkey breast with the bone in, we're going to start by removing the skin. And you want to do this with your hands. And you want to be very careful not to tear it, because we are going to be wrapping it back up in the skin again. The easiest way is just use your fingertip to work through that connective tissue. All that skin should come right off in one piece. That's what we're looking for. We use a boning knife, start on one side of the keel bone here, and cut down, really following the contour of that bone. And once you get going, you can basically just use your thumb. Get it off the wishbone, and there you go. Now the second side, we're gonna go right on the other side of that breastbone. Use your knife just a little bit if it gives you any kind of trouble like that. Now you want to save this for stock, of course. So we're going to take out the tenderloins, which are these two sort of largest muscles here, and those we're going to save for another use. Okay, so what we're going to do first, I'm going to lay the skin out flat here, try and stretch it out as much as possible. Next, I'm going to lay out one piece of my turkey here. So what I'm gonna do is just gonna butterfly it. So with your boning knife, go in just like that. That should help it lay out flat. And I'm gonna place my other turkey breast half over here with the opposite orientation. And I'm gonna do the same exact thing, just butterfly it a little bit on the fatter end so that it lays flat. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slash this about one inch intervals. The idea here is that we're gonna give it some space for all that seasoning to work in. We're gonna rub it all over. Don't be afraid to get your fingers dirty. You wanna get it really nice and deep into all of those little cracks and crevices like that. All right, now you ready to roll? So we're gonna roll this turkey up in its own skin very, very tightly, as tightly as we can. And we really want to make sure that all of the breast is inside and the skin overlaps itself on the outside. You can put it seam side down on the counter like that. Really kind of tuck in the ends. Just off to the side for one second. So I'm gonna lay these out about one inch intervals all the way down, nice and evenly spaced. We're gonna take our pert turkey and place it directly on top, right in the center there. Tie it around pretty tightly, but not too tightly. And what I do is I make a regular knot, I give it a half twist so that the knot stays in place, and then I make my loops for a regular old granny, you know, shoelace style knot. What I find easiest is if you work from both ends towards the center, it helps it really keep its shape nicely. All right. We are ready to vacuum and seal. And there we go. Now, once we're at this phase, 
You could cook it immediately, but it actually helps to let it sit for about six hours or even up to a couple days because you really want to give time for that salt to have an effect. It's going to start curing the meat, it's going to help it retain moisture better, and it's going to give it a better texture. So we're going to go put this in the fridge for a couple days and then we're going to come back when it's time to cook. Nobody ever said good food was fast. All right, it's been two days. I've got my circulator set at 140 degrees Fahrenheit. That's about 60 degrees Celsius. And now we're just gonna lower the turkey down into here. It should sink. There you go. All right, so now we're gonna let this cook for about three to six hours. All right, we're finally just about ready to sear and serve our turkey. So here's how we do it. I'm gonna open up this bag. I'm gonna lay out a few paper towels. I'll take this turkey right out. Now, this turkey is fully cooked at this point, but it doesn't have any color on it, so we need to add that color. We can either do that by deep frying it, which can be a little bit messy, or we can do it in a skillet right here, which is a lot neater. Heat a couple tablespoons of oil in the bottom of a large skillet over high heat. You wanna heat it until it's just about starting to smoke. Now carefully add the turkey into the pan, and be careful because it's gonna splatter a little bit, so you might wanna wear an apron for this. Cook the turkey, just rotating it every so often until it's nice and golden brown on every surface. All right, and as we're done, we're just gonna transfer this to some paper towels on the cutting board, just to blot off a little bit of that excess oil from the pan. And we're basically ready to start slicing and serving. When you're ready to start serving, cut off all the string using a sharp chef's knife or a pair of poultry shears or scissors. Be careful when you peel it off, you don't want to remove any of the skin. Now using a sharp chef's knife, cut the turkey into serving medallions. It should be nice and juicy inside. Fan the medallions out on a plate and serve it all with turkey gravy. This is Kenji Lopez-Alt from Serious Eats in the Food Lab, wishing you the most delicious turkey ever.